Well, here we go. So, um, I've got two microphones working here, so hopefully you can hear me okay. If there's an echo, I do apologise. It's two fighting each other. I'm <laughs> still having technical issues. Um, I did have two cameras working, and then I had three cameras working for a super duper person for what I was painting. And then one of the cameras died. I don't know why it's, it just it starts working and then it freezes with all the stuff going on. I don't know if there's too many stuff, too many stuff, too much stuff going through my USB ports, but alas. So what we talk about today? We're talking about painting white. I'll not use these. Um, come to those for another video. That's for um. Again, I completely forgot the name of. God, I'm good. Right, anyway, so white. What I've done is I sprayed the white. Uh, where's my spaceman gone? If I ever do a video where I'm organised, it would be amazing. It's kind of like I had them organised, and then I thought I showed my son, and then it got disorganised. So, they've all been sprayed on matte white. Um, general white spray from a can that you can buy at a DIY store or a car car spray. Um, as you can see, ooh, white, and then what I did then is I went over it in a white speed paint. It's called Holy White. Um, I mix it with a bit of contrast medium with a wet and a wet brush. Um, I went over them like so, and I did the cats as well like that. And then when it was dry, I put some some paste over the top, which is like a grey. I buy it in these tubes here. So this is the paste. It's really good. Um, it's about just over two euros for effectively a, I think it's a 75 milliliter tube, uh, 83 milliliter tube, 83 milliliter tube for what is effectively about 2.25 euros, 2.25 euros. Um, so less than less than two pound fifty, and for that. I mean, one of these pots here, just to give you a, a comparison, one of these pots is 17 millilitres. One seven, eight three. More. Less. Um, <laughs> yeah, really good. See, um, if I want to bring it up to the colour like the rest of my stuff that I've done before, um, I just put this over the top, water it down a little bit, and paint it over the top. And drop down, and I just dry brush like I do anything else at the end. And it will all match in lovely. And just cover tea. Ah, oh, God. You can take the Englishman out of England, but you can't take the cup of tea away from me. Right, so, I did those that way. Now, the speed paints, and I prefer the Games Workshop of Fox. Apothecary White. Um, let's go and grab that. Here it is. So I prefer this, but I literally just ran out of it. Um, so I went to use this, which I had in my stocks, and it's not far off. I kind of thin it down a bit. I, but I do prefer this. To be fair, it gives a better white. But if you thin the speed paint down a little bit, um, it's not the same, but it, it is good. And you get a nice, get a nice white sheen. So on this one here, what I did for this is I I sprayed it white with my friendly spray can. It's just a toy. Um, and then when that was all done, oh, I missed a bit. Look at that, he's missed a bit. Oh man. So when that was all done, I um, gave it a wash over with. Oh, but before I did that, I gave it a quick spray of gloss varnish. So. Bit closer, just so I can, yeah, we can see what we're doing. So I go over that bit that I missed. 
This here is a horrible mix of greys and speed paint and a bit of apothecary white and water and all that. Um, it's not really the same, but it will, it will just cover that for now. We don't have to be too exact in this world because you're going to dry brush it over anyway and it's all going to get built up. See, you don't need to be too fussy, okay? Some people get things all wild up and all fussy about getting everything perfect. We live in an imperfect world. So, embrace it. Embrace the chaos. And I think that's something that Games Workshop's kind of forgetting. It's that uh, they're kind of losing their chaoticness with how beautiful their models are. Right. I'm using kitchen roll here. Cheap kitchen roll. Cheap. So cheap ass they don't even bleach it. All to save myself 10 cents. Again, cheap ass brushes from China. <laughs> they treat me really well. Um, you don't, look how big it is. You don't need it to be great. It doesn't need to be brilliant for doing these, putting your contrast on or your ink washes on. But anyway, going back to how I washed this before. Um, and I did the same with the terrain as well. So, um, so what I did, sprayed them white. And then I got some null oil, mix it with a contrast medium, just a little bit, and then a wet brush, and then a bit of water in there as well. Um, and yeah, just did that. And it's not, to be fair, it's not a million miles off. It comes darker in the in the shadows than the models, but if that's what you want, then it's fantastic. So. So that's how you get your, your kind of your beginning of your whites, um, so to speak. The next stage after that is the fun. I'm going to use one of these models. This is by JC. Um, so she's done some great sculpts. Um, she gave me the STL for this one, uh, and I reduced it a little bit in size because it's for her game Waste Man. Um, and again, it's just had the apothecary white over the top of it. What I do from there is I get a white. So I've got a bit of white scar. Not the best. Not the worst. To be honest with you, none of the ones are great. So sometimes I use the um, I use the stuff that comes in. These tubes, especially for terrain. So I use the stuff in those tubes because it's dirt cheap. And you can just keep going back over it. And um, I kind of want a quick job, so I've just got this. And this is the worst bit because it's a little bit damp. My brush, not deliberate, but meh. Now we just basically just go over quickly. And what it does is it just basically just brings it all in. So any bits that are kind of um, a bit too much of the old shade on the edges, it will just take off for you. And I've got my glasses on, so I can't actually see what I'm doing. And that's that's the beauty of it. You can do it if you're blind as a bat, like me. I'll set my glasses on so I can see what I'm actually doing. Okay. Everyone's going, oh, you should be using a wet palette, blah, blah, palette, this, that, the other. Well, right. This is what you get with me. We just get it done. And I think that's the important thing. You can worry too much with your painting about getting things kind of magazine standard, web standard. But to be honest with you, in my experience, um, I've done painting for display images and stuff like that, and it all gets <laughs> it all gets photoshopped. <laughs> so I want a painting competition with a model, and they 
They literally displayed it all over the place years ago. Um, they just photoshopped it. That was it. They corrected the eyes on it and, and all that. So I wouldn't worry. I really wouldn't. I don't actually paint eyes anymore because people will digitally add their own eyes if they want to use it for a publication. So I just leave it black. To be honest, no one ever notices. It's almost done some amazing painted eyes. Someone will Photoshop that and Photoshop what you want. So, so that was that. Um, I'll do the cats now. These were these only were able for a short time. I don't know why. Um, Black Sight Studios these is a little free download for a short period of time. Um, and uh, he'll put the cats in space. And they're awesome. Really awesome. So I printed, well, I say I printed a few. I, don't really, I did, I printed a few. My friend printed a few for me as well, but he hasn't posted them to me yet. So I kind of got a new printer and I use them as my test print. So these are the first prints I did on my new printer. Oh, I made some mistakes in my printing, I'll tell you. But <laughs> actually, considering, oh, considering the the mess I made of my printing. So I'll bring this on over a bit more. You're going to play out for me, camera. You are, aren't you? This camera's causing me so many issues. I'm just looking at, I'm not even really even thinking about it. I'm just literally getting over it. Like I said, I'm going to paint the bases a lighter grey anyway, so the fact I'm getting all the bases is by the by. Um, uh, got a bit of the paste on here. And it's not a bad thing, it's just a piece of cardboard. It just means you've got something to use for dry brushing sometimes, which is good for the big bits. So these are for the game. Demon Ship, I remember that. Demon Ship, again by Black Sight Studios. Um, we did the digital deal, just to avoid the customs fees over here. Um, so I really appreciate companies that do digital bundles um, for us that don't live in some countries. I was going to say civilised world, but I'm not sure how civilised America is. I don't even have free healthcare. What's going on there? I mean, it's not totally free in Germany, but pretty close to. For example, in Germany, you order a private ambulance to come pick you up, and if you order from the right company, it's like 10 euros. 10 euros, that's it. So, I mean, yes, when you consider that probably in America they probably charge you a couple thousand and the rest. I think that's pretty close to free. Anyway, how are we doing? What are we talking about politics? So, that's um, Demon Ship. Right. Got these doors as well, these are for Demon Ship. Um, <laughs> it's a really, it was a really good package, really, because. It is for a game, it's a one player game as far as I can tell. I think there are rules where you can kind of competitively do it, but you just can't get through a ship and see how long you can survive against these one player spawning stuff. And the ship is on a 6x6 six six square, and all the stuff, all the terrain is basically kind of reused and moved around to create different parts of the ship. But from a terrain point of view, this is going to be amazing for my space station, and I'm going to show you my space station in a minute. So yes, or I'll show you in a minute, or should I do a different video? I'll do a separate video on my space station, I think. That way I can then actually, rather than you watching me fumble around, I can try. What I'm doing here, I'm just circling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one I've done, and then one I haven't done. So you can compare the two. It is, this is just painting white. 
You don't. Well, not after S Star Trek white. More well, Star Wars white. So this was the the white spray with the watered down non oil, and then next to it is just after a bit of a dry brush. Not a huge difference, but it's whiter. I can do this one now, so it matches. And you might make mistakes. So that be. If you do, you do. And this is the, what I love about inks. I think everyone went mad for um, contrast paints when they came out. But inks are still, I would say, one of your most important tools. I mean, I, I painted entire armies pretty much just using inks. I had to do some Afghans a couple of years ago. And apart from the original flesh cut, I basically just painted the flesh on them with, um, I think it was bronze flesh, whatever it was called back then. Um, and then from there, I just used nothing but inks to paint me, over, it was over a white undercoat. Nothing but inks to paint the entire model. Until it came to the guns. Um, you can see you can see the back. It's just kind of you've got this dark patch here, you can just do this. Look at the state of that brush. I think it was like two or three quid for a whole pack of them. If you're doing stuff like this, you don't need the most expensive brushes. Right, there we go. And then oh we've got some well, these cubes, I'm not quite sure how to hold, look at that my hands now. I really should, so my suggestion here would be, wear gloves. But, putting a black glove on to do this, it looks bloody awful. Where's my black gloves? Oh, that's not a black glove, that's just a black thing on a black glove. No, can't find my black glove. But yeah, it just looks awful on camera, black gloves, so I kind of just get on with it. You can see, I think you can see this one quite, quite clearly how different it is straight away after just a little bit of a... And if you are a perfectionist, so what you can do is just go around the handles and stuff with a ink afterwards. So I'm going to show you one bef next to each other. And there you are, you can see the difference already. That's quite stark, the difference on those. And it just kind of brings in that because the contrast, the inks and all that, they do pull, admittedly. And I paint a lot of white. I paint way too much white. I shall try and do a video showing you my, my force of grey aliens. They're all in white uniforms. So. But it's because painting white, everyone goes, oh, you don't do white, it's horrible colour to do. So I kind of just faced it and did it. And I kind of want to repaint my Space Marines to, to match. because I quite like painting white now. This is going to be an interesting one, so I've got some interesting shapes and things here. No idea this is going to turn out, so let's find out. I think that's the other thing, you just, sometimes you just got to wing it and do it on the fly. But not worry too much. You just end up getting yourself all worked up about how you're going to do something, and sometimes you just need to do it. And if it won't work out, it doesn't work out. So, I did a load of different Space Marine chapters before I started painting my Space Marines. Um, and I thought I'd show them off, and then we always oh, go for the, go for those, go for those, go for those, you know, these, those look really nice. So I kind of did. And I'm kind of glad I did, but I'm also regretting it because I've been control with 40k is it doesn't always work in your favour to to 
go off piste a bit because they kind of punish you by punish is probably the wrong word but you kind of miss out on certain characters and stuff then because my space was a purple I generally play them as space marines as ultra ultra marines but yeah this is adventurous one so this is um a resin cast that my friend John sent me ages ago in a box of random stuff. Um, it looks quite aliensy. It's got the rifle, pulse rifles and stuff. Like that it looks like and looks like M4s, um, some boxes and whatnot. So I'm going to do this and then I'll just work it out later. So for the space-based mission, there is a thing where you want a bit of furniture in there, otherwise it's just going to be a shooting gallery. This in camera for once. This is quite good. I'm not even paying attention to the camera very much. Bonus. Alright. Don't know why I'm doing that. But I guess it's going to be a wall. Some sort. So, there you go. That's that. Now we've got this terrain here. So, this is scraps of plastic that's been cut off things whilst making conversions. Um, I buy these. I've talked about these before in a few of my other videos, I think. If the sound didn't work on those, I do apologise. So these are coasters. They are the same size as a Space Marine Dreadnought base, which is quite useful because, again, friend, same friend John, he sent me some parts he printed to make a Dreadnought Brutal because I missed out on the. Um, on the model thing when it came out, because um, stocks around this way were rather rare. Yeah, so I used it as a base for that. So these all the bits for making other conversions and stuff like that, I kind of put on here a few rocks, and then I use that paste stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, there's a barrel here. My son decided that he was going to help me make some terrain. And he got a bit rough clipping the barrels off. He's, he's only six. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's on here now. I just kind of shaved off all of the Imperial bits. And the barrel's a barrel. Um, so this is kind of like a junk pile that's going to go on my moon terrain. So, it's, um, I'm talking so much, my brush is probably dried out. Come on, I want a cup of tea. Let's get this done, I can drink. Drink a cup of tea. Okay, so so you can dry brush and you can dab. Um, dabbing is quite good. For, it's not like the, the dabbing that youngsters talk about. It's just using your brush and just kind of doing that. And it kind of has the same effect as dry brushing sometimes, but you can get into those places you can't get with a dry brush. I have seen that you can get some proper dry brushes. brushes. I've never tried them. I would love to. Um, but I don't know if I can warrant it. Right, I'm sure they are amazing. Uh, I think with the shorter ends on them, I've seen. I might try and after he's had a bit of work on it, I might try and chop this down and see if I can make one out of this or one of the others like it. Because um, I'm sure that they're probably really good because. The effects I've seen of other people using proper dry brush brush blur, the dry brush brushes. Right, so we've got a bit of a problem here that the colour's not going in, so it's going to dab it. There we go. Yeah. And what we're going to do later on is we're going to just age it all. So yeah, this is quite a nice one. That's got another nice little shadow on it. I think about doing some some kind of grungy goo coming out of the barrel. Yeah, grungy goo coming on the moon. I'm sure you, I'm sure you were there. Are, there is gravity, isn't there? So it's just going to be slower acting. So there you go. So that's that. Now we're going to come back to this one. I don't know if this is dry. No, it's not. Oh, damn. So I'm going to just do the top just so you can kind of get an idea.
So when I do the white models, I tend to do all the white first. Um, and you do the dry brush here, just so you can, you've actually got a colour then to, to mix back into if you need to. Um, if you do overstep the mark with another colour, you're probably going to hit the white rather than anything else. And so what I do is I add the battle damage after. Because you can use battle damage to cover up a multitude of sins. And you ever see people in da battle damage, they're using a sponge. So they're not, they haven't spent weeks planning it or anything like that. It literally is on the fly. And they will, I'm sure, it's not just me, they will use a bit of battle damage just to hide any colour bleeds or anything like that. I'm going to show you one of these finished in a minute. But you can really see it's just starting to, to look better just for this little quick white line. I mean, I've done, I'm doing like several armies at once here. Um, what I'll do is then I'll, I'll go away and I'll constantly, when it comes to the colours, because all the white's the same. Once it comes to the colours, I shall concentrate on them individually. Now I'll do the legs in a bit because the legs are still drying. Should have probably just left it and then filled in the gaps with a bit of ink later. There we go. Okay. So let's try and show you some finished models. This one, what I've done is I put a colour over the top of the white and uh, using on the contrast. I think it was ultramarine blue. Um, then the same for the pistols. I used the Blood Angels red, uh, but I kept all the white where I could. And then this one here, the Russian, I basically went over it with um, the bone colour again, which I'll do for contrast. That one's called now. Skeleton bone. Uh, they come up with some daft names, don't they? Um, so yeah, and then as regards the big dude, grab this one up. So there you are. That's the finished. Nothing amazing, nothing special. But I've got two of these. This will be my third one when I got it painted up. Um, yeah, so that's my aliens. I'm going to probably redo the basing so it goes for the moon uh, because I've got a lot of moon terrain and not a lot of brown terrain. Um, of brown terrain, I don't know where it disappeared to, I've lost it. Um, I've got a lot, I've got a moon sheet. Um, and I'm going to do my moon terrain in the next video, I think. So I'm going to clear my desk for now. I'll probably do a video at some point on painting my Luna. I just noticed something. <gasps> dun dun dun! Hopefully, I've got a bit of white here. Right. So I should probably regret this, but I'm going to do it anyway. What's life without regrets? It's dull. Right. I'm just going to paint on top. Mash it all in. Awesome. Just a few strokes of that, going that direction, just to sort of bring it together. Okay. Awesome. Right. So, yeah, these are 3D prints sent to me on somebody on Discord. <laughs> Uh, apparently they're done by a Russian company, they're no longer available. Um, again, I printed them originally and they were a bit too small. So I made them bigger. And this one I had to make smaller. 
but yeah, I mean, at least the original printouts weren't great, but I just wanted to do a test to see how okay. you can measure as much as you like, but when it comes out, you kind of go, Ugh. and there we go. That's the difference in height between the original and but these now will fit in theory. A little on the table would be fine. Fit these. Right. A bit more stock here. Probably got a bit more armor on. I shall probably donate these to my space pirates. Um, and I might do a video on the space pirates at some point. I'm working on for Luna. Um, I'm trying to work out on some equipment as well. Like, should it be a vehicle piece of equipment? Um, one thing is a jump pack. So I've decided it's probably going to be a piece of equipment rather than a vehicle and probably just what you could do is you kind of spend a concentrate token to um, to boost your move. Maybe you do a roll d6 or something or a roll of a 1 you crash. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. Um, as regards the pirates, um, so what they can do is they can use substandard equipment is one of the ideas at the moment it's um, a card costs nothing um, and you give it to the guy and then you roll for every credit you want to save you roll a before the game you you roll a tear dice and then for each tear you apply to the model before the game starts um, but you, so you want three credits you wrote free tear dice. Um, yeah, so it kind of, they can kind of give themselves a bit of a disadvantage to get a credit advantage to spend on equipment for the next game, effectively. Okay, I don't know how they work. So they kind of, they got, they got to kind of save money on not maintaining their equipment. Right. Anyway, sorry I haven't got my ugly mug on the screen. Um, I have had a head shave, so I haven't got any hair. Um, yeah, next video I shall try and show some space bases and some terrain. Uh, thanks for watching if you got this far, and hopefully catch you again. Bye.